Good morning, dear colleagues. My name is Jilali Anan. I'm from Raymond Poincaré Hospital from University of Paris-Saclay in Garches, France. My task today is to talk with you about corticosteroids for community acquired pneumonia. I have no disclosure for this talk. So let's start with some rationale for using corticosteroids in severe infections like community acquired pneumonia. So first, uh, one need to know how corticosteroids uh, contrib contribute to the regulation of inflammation. So in healthy tissues, as you know, there are resident cells at the level of the tissues, including fibroblasts, mast cells, and macrophages. And these cells are there to uh, sense any threat to the tissues. In case of breaking in the epithelium, then uh, danger-associated molecular patterns or pathogen-associated molecular patterns molecules are released and will activate these resident cells, fibroblasts, macrophages, and mast cells. And these uh, activated cells will then release a number of uh, inflammatory mediators that in particular aimed at regulating the cardiovascular responses and the recruitment of additional cells. Glucocorticoids are immediately released uh, in this very early phase, uh, and they will contribute by downregulating the release of the pro-inflammatory molecules by mast cells and by macrophages. A few hours after the breaking of the epithelium, corticosteroids continue to contribute regulating the influx of inflammatory cells by now inhibiting the release of the um, uh, E-selectin and other selectin family molecules, uh, and as well as of the uh, ICAM and PCAM molecules. And by inhibiting these molecules, glucocorticoids will prevent the tethering, honing, and transmigration of immune cells that are circulating in the blood. After a few days comes a time for resolution of inflammation. At this time, glucocorticoids now will activate it, the macrophages and M M2C types of macrophages, uh, allowing them to clean the tissues from apoptotic neutrophils and other debris from bacteria, for example. Also, these uh, cells will now release anti-inflammatory mediators like IL-10 and TGF-beta that will contribute to downregulate the activation of circulating cells. And finally, when the time of wound healing come, glucocorticoids continue to positively contribute to the process by regulating the uh, re-epithelization and, and collagen deposition uh, by, by fibroblasts and also will regulate the uh, vascular growth factor release and in general, the angiogenesis uh, process. Glucocorticoids have a very powerful effect on T cells, and in particular, they will regulate the polarization of these T cells, and they will inhibit the polarizations towards T helper 1 cells and T helper 17 cells, while they will uh, favor the uh, uh, polarization towards Th2 cells and T reg cells. There is no today data to inform the exact role of corticosteroids in the polarization towards TH9 and uh, TFHS cells. Uh, as a result of uh, this uh, glucocorticoids mediated regulation, uh, one can see here that immune cells are reprogrammed rather than uh, suppressed by glucocorticoids. In these experiments, uh, human monocytes were exposed to dexamethasone, and one can see that many more genes were upregulated, uh, showed in red color on this slide, than genes that were downregulated in green color of the slide. And uh, very interestingly, one can see that among the various genes that are upregulated, are the genes that uh, contribute to innate immunity, 
And among the genes that are downregulating, one can find the genes uh, involved in the adaptive immunity. So let's now look at the clinical evidence. So the most robust clinical evidence so far comes from the Cochrane uh, Systematic Review published in 2017. Uh, in this systematic review and meta-analysis, 17 RCTs have been included. One can see that on average, the quality, methodological quality of included study was rather mild to moderate with a number of issues related to blinding of participants and personals, uh, so performance biases, as well as uh, detection biases with blinding of outcome assessment. And also there were a number of issues about uh, selective reporting and a potential risk for reporting biases. What were the crude results from these meta-analyses? As shown here on the forest plot, one can see that with regard to mortal, all course mortality in the short term, uh, these meta-analyses found a significant reduction in the risk of death associated with the use of corticosteroids with a risk ratio of 0.66 and an upper limit of a 95 confidence interval of 0.92. However, there was some heterogeneity as shown by the tests for subgroup differences that uh, showed a squad height of 75 person. And indeed, looking at studies with uh, at low risk of bias, one can see that in these studies with higher methodological quality, there was no more evidence for a statistical significant reduction in the risk of death with the use of corticosteroids. Regarding other important clinical outcome, the meta-analysis found uh, a significant and remarkable uh, reduction, uh, acceleration uh, in uh, recovery from community acquired pneumonia with a remarkable reduction in the risk of early clinical failure. Likewise, the time to clinical cure was hastened by corticosteroids uh, uh, on average by almost two days. So uh, patients treated with corticosteroids uh, almost were recovered two days sooner than patients treated with usual care of placebo. Also, patients treated with corticosteroids were less likely to need mechanical ventilation a very important reduction in the risk of requiring mechanical ventilation and also uh, less uh, uh, likelihood of requiring vasopressor drugs. And because these patients treated with corticosteroids required less often mechanical ventilation and less often vasopressor drugs, their hospital stay was also shortened. And indeed, in, on average, patients receiving corticosteroids remained on average three days less at hospital as compared to controls. We recently uh, published the results of the approach trial that uh, enrolled 1,241 patients with septic shock. Patients were allocated to receive either hydrocortisone combined to fructocortisone or placebo. And as shown on that slide, the treatment of corticosteroids was associated with a remarkable and significant improvement in survival. So we looked at the subgroup of patients with community acquired pneumonia at baseline in the approach cohort. So one can see that uh, the Bristol day test for interaction between subgroup was uh, statistically significant, uh, highlighting that patients with community acquired pneumonia were more likely to respond favorably to corticosteroids than patients with septic shock not related to community acquired pneumonia. And the risk ratio was 0.75 for mortality at 90 day uh, with an upper limit of a confidence of a 95 confidence interval at 0.91. In terms of survival and compromise curves, one can see here that patients uh, with community acquired pneumonia-related septic shock had a 
um, and treated with corticosteroid uh, survived uh, uh, longer and uh, were uh, had a higher chance of surviving than patients who were receiving a placebo. Likewise, patients with community acquired pneumonia related septic shock treated with corticosteroids had a uh, 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 faster time uh, to uh, be weaned off from vasopressor uh, than patients receiving a placebo. The time to win off vasopressor was shorter, as well as the time to be weaned off mechanical ventilation, as well as the time for resolution of organ dysfunction as measured by the SOFA score. So the time to get the SOFA score of less than six points was much shorter in corticosteroid treated patients as compared to the placebo treated patients. So in conclusions, corticosteroids probably improve short and mid-term all-cause mortality in adults with community acquired pneumonia. Corticosteroids probably has the clinical cure, resolution of shock, respiratory, of respiratory failure, and of multiple organ failures. Corticosteroids possibly result in greater survival benefit in the sickest patients, that is, those patients with shock or ARDS. Thank you very much for your attention.